With the film that we've just seen as a background and the remarks and comments there, you heard them say that at one time there were 12 crushing plants in the talking stage, and he indicated that uh, that was turning into a reality of about three plants. He mentioned the Cargill plant, of course, and the one under construction at Velva, and then identified one in South Dakota. As you know from past meetings of this nature, uh, many of you have been here each year. It's been an ongoing interest in regard to the possibility of the National Farmers Organization developing a relationship with a future crushing plant. Uh, we have had several subjects, uh, several meetings that have covered this subject at past conventions. And of course, uh, we've had I.S. Joseph Company representatives here indicating their interest and their intention at those past meetings of moving in the direction of being involved in a crushing plant. As a continuation of that interest and as a continuation of the already uh, long-standing relationship that we have as a supplier to I.S. Joseph Company as a uh, buyer and exporter of sunflowers. A part of our program here today is to ask I.S. Joseph Company to come here and give us an update because today they are actually involved in the construction of a sunflower crushing plant uh, neither of the three which were mentioned in this previous film. He's been with us before. He's the man that I deal with in representing you and your sunflowers in sales, uh, especially for the harvest sale block, which is our biggest and most effective uh, program in the markets. We have with us today Al Virgin of the I.S. Joseph Company. Al is involved and is here to give a few short remarks in regard to where they are on the crushing plant and some other comments. And uh, when he's completed with that, uh, we'll open it up to some questions. So without any further statements, I'd like to introduce to you Al Virgin of the I.S. Joseph Company. Al, we're glad to have you here with us. Thank you, Tim, ladies and gentlemen, and Yana Fawns. Pl I'm pleased to be here today also. Now that you've seen the movie, it's time for our commercial. <laughs> I'm going to keep you on my remarks brief today because I've got a little of that sun butter stuck on the roof of my mouth, and that's, that's drying me out a little bit. But uh, just before we go on here, I'd, Doris mentioned something about Tim, that, you know, what happened to him in Corning, Iowa. Seems he was having a little problem with the uh, city council down there. And the Council recognized that, yes, Tim, a man's house is his castle and that virtually he can do anything he wants there. However, Tim, not on the dining room table and not in front of a six-foot picture window. <laughs> Tim shows this same enthusiasm and dedication for your organization and for you as members of the National Farmers Organization. You can see this in the success of your program, and the timeliness and promptness of your deliveries that you succeeded with this year, the 81 season in Duluth Superior in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Uh, it was truly a pleasure and I could notice by Tim's conversation and my own observations that the calls and the problems were been much fewer and the best that we've had so far. I believe there's a couple factors that helped you. So number one, we had a considerably lower 81 carry-in of stocks than we have ever had, or in fact what the government had predicted. The USDA had uh, predicted about a 450,000 metric ton carry-in, and I would be surprised to see if half of that existed. This coupled with the fact that your harvest was slightly delayed created a situation where virtually vessels were waiting for sunflower seeds to be delivered to load on board to clear the lakes. Thus, elevator inventories were low and lines of trucks moved uh, faster than normal. 
The situation, however, like all good things, must come to an end, and the situation reversed itself in mid-November and, and the later part of November. The reason this happened was uh, that the cause created the effect. Is that because there were so many ships in there at one time, when they reversed themselves and went out of the lakes and through the locks, you created a traffic problem, utilizing both the locks and the pilots that are required to direct them out, that there was a shortage of uh, pilots and lock time for inbound ships. Thus, for about a week to 10 day period there, there were very few coming in and a lot leaving. That situation has reversed itself and we've got a couple elevators now looking for sunflower seeds again. Another factor that uh, I feel is a concern to both of us as, uh, sun as members in the sunflower seed industry was that the crop this year was reduced inside from earlier anticipation and also the volume that uh, we handled was slightly lower than usual again primary due to the reduction in the crop size. As far as price forecast, uh, next eight months, nine months, I look at it this way. For the next two weeks, we basically go through a, or I should say the next 30 days, we go through a diversified transition program. For two weeks, U.S. producers are concerned of getting that last two loads or three loads into Duluth Superior, and we as exporters are concerned about that ship not getting frozen in the ice. Two weeks after that, our concentration goes on the Christmas holidays, our families, and our religion. After that, we've got eight months left of the 81-82 production season. During that period, if we continue to export at the same rate that we did a year ago and stay at the same level of crush, which is approximately 800,000 ton a year and about 14,000, excuse me, 1,450 of exports, we virtually will have nil for carryover going into the 82 crop. Because of these reasons, this tight supply and demand situation, I feel it's very realistic that between now and May, we will see 1350 sunflower seeds in Duluth Superior again. The factor that upsets me somewhat, and it's unfortunate, is that it seems like every year we depend upon a crop failure somewhere in the world to bolster our prices here domestically. Uh, four years ago, five years ago, we had a large reduction in production in France. For the past three years, the USSR has had problems. Two years ago, it was Mexico, and this past year, Spain, having an extreme drought situation. We feel, and I'm sure you as members of the NFO feel, it's time that we strongly develop the U.S. market and control these prices so that we see much more consistency and a level that's profitable to both of us. To go along with this idea, I'm going to review an occasion that happened three years ago in your St. Louis Convention. Mr. Joseph presented to you a proposal to develop and construct a sunflower seed plant in Enderlin, North Dakota. Any of, any of you, and I talked with one of your members here earlier, as, that have driven by this site, I'm happy to say and proud to say that's not a portion of the garrison diversion project that's going on up there. That is, in reality, a sunflower seed plant that's been on con in construction since last spring. It's a modern, efficient plant using the best technology. We're jointly, on a 50-50 basis, constructing it with a corporation based out of Israel that has built sunflower seed crushing plants around the world. This is their first one in the U.S., and that was why they were very enthusiastic about getting involved in the project. This plant in the fall of 1982 will be crushing 1,500 short tons of sunflower seeds a day. If we take 1,400 pounds per acre as an average yield in that particular area, every day that plant will require 2,150 acres of sunflower seeds. So you can see the importance that you as producers will play in this role with the plant. As it uh, indicated in the film with Cargill's plant, we too will be concentrating primarily on producing the high quality superior cooking oil that we're all using in our homes today, and that's sunflower oil. However, there's also a byproduct 
the meal, of course, which we will pr be producing a 41 to 42 percent protein product, which is nearly equivalent to soybean meal and will compete on an equivalent basis in that area. Of course, to do this, we have to dehull about 20 percent of those sunflower seeds, which brings up the question, what do you do with the hulls? The plan is designed so that the hulls will be burnt and the heat from that producing steam to, to be used in the processing and also to create electricity. In fact, it's designed to create more electricity than the plant will actually use and will be able to sell to the local utilities. By being creative and efficient in the processing and marketing area of this plant, our goal is like yours, cost of production plus a reasonable profit. Not to take any more of your time, I know you've got uh, a lot of plans to be made for your growth in the future, etc. I'll answer more questions about the plant. I've got an artist's sketch of uh, the plant as it will look in Enderlin, North Dakota, and I'll be happy to, this will be available after the meeting. You can walk, come up and view it, and I'll answer any questions I can regarding the plant, uh, even though I'm not an engineer or technologist. And, may get oil and meal mixed up once in a while, but I'll try not to. But uh, I'd like to leave you with one thought today, or, and that is that the I.S. Joseph Company is making a substantial commitment to sunflower seeds in the development of this industry. We would ask your continued support and dedication and enthusiasm to this project so that we can achieve both your goals and our goals together. But thank you. Marks except those about my personal life, Al. <laughs> uh, jealous that I met your neighbor. I'm going to have to find out something about him. Well, at this time, I'd like to open it up uh, for any questions in regard to what Al has said here. I'll take a few minutes for that, and then uh, we have another man with us here. Uh, Jim Ross from KMA radio station Shenandoah, Iowa, which covers a big agricultural area of uh, Kansas and Nebraska and Iowa and Missouri, and uh, he's going to be interested in interviewing uh, Al Virgin for a while, so they will be leaving our meeting after Al has answered any questions that you have. Any questions? It's in the southeast corner, about 90 to 100 miles from Fargo. So, excuse me, 80. Okay. Okay. There's an expert because he's the farmer I talked to earlier today. <laughs> One other comment I'd like to make is a George brought up a very important subject, and that is a. Uh, personnel that will be involved in operating the plant is that we're definitely looking for personnel in the Enderlin area that would be interested in working in the plant, uh, all phases of it, office personnel, plant personnel, etc. I know just uh, to relay an experience to you, when they were laying the track for this facility, which is, was complete, is completely completed, Two people came up from Minneapolis who are experienced track layers, and they put an ad in the local paper wanting farm men to help on the project. That track was completed without any problems in a record-breaking time with only two supervisors. Let me do a At the initial stage, it's just going to be crude, degummed sunflower oil. What kind of company is involved? It's called USOP, or its abbreviations. It's quite of a diversified development group. But they have uh, built plants in Eastern Bloc countries, South Africa, and the Mideast. No, 50-50. Completely 50 50. Excuse me. You will have a meal byproduct also after the oil is done, right? The sunflower meal, yes. Yeah.
which will be the high quality one. Normally sunflower meal that's produced currently is about 28 to 30 percent protein. This could only be utilized in cattle feed because of the high fiber content. By taking out the hulls, we bring it up to 41, 42 percent protein. It can be utilized in poultry feed and swine feed additionally. And the hulls, as I mentioned, will be utilized internally, burnt for, for fuel. Leroy? This has been a concern for us. And I, one of the reasons possibly why we waited three years for the development of this plant. And that caused many sleepless nights and uh, probably more visibly loss of hair. But uh, <laughs> we, as I forecast here price-wise in the next eight months, I see a good future for the sunflower seeds because of the demand overseas and because we do have this large investment in cr sunflower crushing plants both Cargill, Pillsbury's coming on stream in uh, about March or April, that the demand for the seed is going to be there. The burden that's on ourselves as crushers is developing the oil market, primarily. <coughs> and that's... Well, how about the price of flour you're looking forward to? This currently? Well, at least 82. 82, there's uh, no contracts out at current time the uh, bid in the off bid in the market is 50 cents lower than the May price, which is about uh, 12 cents right now delivered to Duluth, which would put you at 11.50 bid and 12.50 offered for uh, fall of '82, about a dollar a hundred weight spread. But currently, and there has not been any actual fixed pricing. Okay, any other any other questions uh, for Al? In the, the processing plant, as far as that now, it's not really interchangeable with beans or such as that, uh, or is it? Because this plant has both the expeller and the solvent process in it, it can process virtually any oil seed, soybeans, uh, rapeseed, uh, and sunflower seeds, safflower seed, yes. But our concentration is and our goal is to crush 100% sunflower seeds. Yes, sir. That's per hundred pounds. Yeah. Okay. Any I questions? <laughs> Thank you. I Hopefully, in two years, we'll say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> be late fall of 82. Yes, it's not going to be the early part because there, as in all manufacturing, uh, delays in shipments, et cetera, that uh, you, anticipate, or you hope to anticipate that you've covered every angle, but they do occur. I would look uh, towards the 1st of November of next year. Al and I have had some discussion on this, and uh, maybe you could restate that, Al. Uh, the, the storage space that you'll have there, it would become available to, to buy seeds into possibly somewhat prior to the time you'd actually crush, or how do you see that? I talked with our engineer yesterday prior to coming down here, Tim, got a more current update, and unfortunately that particular area of the steel that is utilized in the storage bins is that part of the production that has been uh, slowed down so that the receiving facilities, the actual bends itself the, for the 30 days of storage that we'll have available will be one of the last parts that will be constructed. Are you anticipating, and these are always indefinite dates, I know, that it would be, let's say, October 1 or, or not that early? I would say close to November 1st. Okay. What is about half and half on something else? Both. Either it's, uh, I would say the track wise, it's designed for trucks primarily. But we do have a reciprocal switch agreement with the BN. It's on a Sioux line track, but there's a switch just down the road, uh, 20, 15, 20 miles or so. That'll, it's available for uh, the Burlington Northern track, I believe that runs north and south along the Red River Valley. So Minnesota seeds can, I think, 
feasibly go into the plant. Okay, any other questions? Thank you. If not, I'd uh, like to thank Al for taking t time to come here and uh, give us this update uh, from IS Joseph Company. Uh, as Edgar asked there, and uh, it's been pointed out there, 50-50 in this plant with a uh, company from uh, Israel that's had some uh, wide experience in other areas of the world with uh, crushing plants. We appreciate um, the opportunity and relationship that we've had uh, by having uh, I.S. Joseph have a, a very open uh, book policy with us in terms of giving us ideas of what freight costs to Europe and uh, all the things that uh, are good background information when you're working this uh, sunflower market and making decisions in the long run of uh, what we're able to do. So Al, uh, thanks again for uh, being here. And uh, Jim, if you would like to uh, meet with Al so that you can meet your schedule uh, later on, be welcome to do that at this time. Thank you. One of the things that we face in uh, many of the specialty commodities is a legislated tax or deduction for promotion of the commodity. And regardless of individual views of those, um, I am happy today uh, to be in, to some extent, making use of something that is the result of that. We do have a, a short film by the North, uh, done by the North Dakota Sunflower Council uh, with the use of some of the one cent per hundred uh, state checkoff in North Dakota as a uh, film that will help us to learn more about sunflowers. Many of you n may know all of this. There's people in this room here who have an interest and we want to get rid of that idea that um, our president uh, indicated on the podium yesterday that sunflowers is a weed. We're starting to get uh, interest in the production of many other areas than just North Dakota and South Dakota. I'd like to take time to show you that film at this time before we continue with the rest of our program. Warren, would you... Let me uh, stop this for a second.